Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know who I am, I'm Brittany. I am a PA student who is about to enter her research semester. I just finished my clinicals and I thought that today I would do a video on how I studied for my EORs. I know a lot of you really like the video that I've done on how to study during didactic year and if you haven't seen that video yet, I will link it in the corner somewhere here and you guys can go click on that. If you are interested in how I studied my clinical year, then this video is for you. And I know it's been long due. A lot of you have asked me for it and today I'm finally going to film that video. Just a brief overview, EOR stands for End of Rotation Exam. And essentially what that is, is after your seven core rotations or ever many you have, you sit down for a two hour exam where you will go through a hundred and I believe 50 questions. I think 10 of those questions are omitted and then the rest are actually counted towards your grade. And the reason they do that is so that they can kind of gauge and see what kind of questions are right for that exam and they really standardize it across every single student in the country. So don't worry if you weren't really sure what the answer for that question was. PAEA gives you a blueprint of all the break down topics in the exam. So an example would be this. This is something I printed out from the website itself. It's the exam topic list, but there's also a blueprint which tells you the percentage of each topic on each exam. And they'll go in depth with each rotation you have. So surgery, emergency medicine, internal medicine, family medicine, pediatrics, psychiatry, and OBGYN. They all go into depth on what exactly is on each exam and which percentage of that topic is on the exam. The only thing is, from experience, I've used these blueprints on each exam. Sometimes they are not super accurate. Sometimes there'll be topics that are not listed on the blueprint at all. But, you know, you've been in PA school, you know that anything that's been taught to you is fair game. And it's really up to yourself to kind of delve into those topics on your own, even if they're not taught in the classroom or if they don't come across rotation. Um, they're all still pretty fair questions that can be asked on an end of rotation exam. With that being said, the exam topic list, this is something that I used to kind of map out what I want to study. And you'll see on my paper, after every topic, I kind of write like week one, I wanna read all of these topics, week two, and I just sort of map it out so that I will have all of my reading materials part of my studying done before week four or week three even if there's not that many topics to read through. You should be able to map out when you want to be finished reading and when you want to start questions and things like that. So this is essentially what I did for each rotation. I would also give myself some extra time. So with surgery, I knew that I was going to be in the hospital for a lot longer and not have as much time to study. And so I would kind of force myself to finish the reading in three weeks. But in hindsight, it wasn't really possible. And so I had to extend it. But writing down that I wanted to have this all done by week three kind of pushed me in that direction to keep studying, to keep striving towards finishing so that I wouldn't become lazy, if that makes sense. So that's essentially what I did. And then after I finished reading all the material, I would start my questions. And there are three different question modalities that I kind of use. So the first one is Roche Review, the second being Hippo Education, and the third is the Roche Review Boost Exams. Roche Review, I had to pay for a subscription for, and then Hippo Education was actually free, and it's free for students if you have a APA membership and my school requires us to have that so that's why I say it was free for me. Rosh Review I really liked because their explanations were really concise and they kind of went through each option of the questions and explained why that was the incorrect answer but then also went back and gave you the right answer and why it was the right answer. So I liked it because it went through the question with you and it explained anything you would need to know about that question. As for the reading, I had two different sources that I would read up on. 
The first is a comprehensive guide and this is just material that my classmates and I put together into a like PDF. Um, and so this is an example of the Women's Health EOR for OBGYN. And then I would take my pens and my highlighters and just kind of highlight and write anything that I thought was important. So you'll see here, I try to draw images as well because I'm a very visual person. And so drawing and sketching out these little things would also help me with memorization. But aside from using the comprehensive guides, if I didn't have that, I also bought these Pants Prep Pearl books. And I know a lot of schools don't recommend them for studying for a didactic year because it is an all-inclusive, comprehensive overview of every single topic you would ever need to know about in PA school. But I purposely bought them for clinical year because this is the time that you should be reviewing. And then I also knew that I was gonna be using this when I study for my boards that's coming up soon. So it was almost an investment for me. It's pretty inexpensive. I would say these two books together were $50, which is really, really nice. What I would also do in these books is highlight. So you'll see I have everything highlighted, circled, um, and I annotated things that I thought were really important for the exam. So this was one source and then that comprehensive guide that I showed you before was my second source. And I would read through all the topics on the list and cross them out as I went. Now, if there was a topic that I didn't truly understand even after reading, I would look up videos. I would try to look up the little images on osmosis because those would kind of give me acronyms and little things to remember, little nitpicky stuff that was really hard for me to understand. But there are so many resources out there. I know a lot of my classmates or even just other PA students I've met on rotations, they've recommended sketchy medical review videos. I'm not really sure what that is because I've never used it, but they've also used it for like microbiology and um, pharmacology. So if that is a resource for you, definitely use that. All right, so I've learned that as I went through my rotations, I would, wanted to start doing questions earlier on. So the first week I would solely read, the second week I would start to just do like 10 questions here or there. And when you make your purchase on Rosh Review, you get 250 questions for each rotation. And what I would do is the second week do 10 questions here or there, the third week, I wanted to kind of finish those 250 questions. So I would do however many in order to finish those 250, whether that be 10 a day, 50 a day, 25 a day. It just really depended on my pace. And then at the end of week four, I wanted to start doing the hippo education questions. And that was about 150 or so questions. So it wasn't super long. End of week four five i really really just wanted to go over those questions that i got wrong and so my method to this was as i was doing the questions on rosh and hippo i would screenshot the ones that i got wrong put them into a google drive folder and then on week five i would go into that folder open each screenshot open up the question on rosh or hippo and then reread the question reread the explanation and this worked for me because it forced me to read the question again, kind of answered a second time and see if I knew the answer further in my rotation when I've one, been exposed to it in the hospital and two, maybe I got up to it when I was reading and um, just kind of quiz myself a second time. And if I still got it wrong, then that's when I would write down the kind of information on a piece of paper. And this would be my like study guide because this was stuff that I was not retaining even after multiple times of seeing it. And so I knew that this was more important for me to reread on and to write down. That's essentially what I would do. So my fifth week, I would go through all those questions that I got wrong and then try to write down anything that was important on a piece of paper. My last week, I would leave for trying to just like reread the most important things that I wasn't really understanding or what or wasn't really comprehending to the fullest degree and then a couple days before my EOR I would do the boost exam. Now the boost is an extra exam that you have to pay for on Rosh Review but it's totally worth it and I think it I used it as a mock EOR for myself to kind of see 
where I landed on how much information I knew for that exam. Usually I wouldn't review those questions unless I really really didn't understand the question and in that case I would flag it and just reread those. That exam was a mock exam for me to see how I would do on the actual EOR. I really didn't study the day before the exam and that's just solely for myself because I didn't want to freak myself out but also Cramming isn't going to do you any good for the EOR because it's something you really need to start studying for from the beginning of the rotation. And at that point, you know what you know and studying up until the last second isn't really going to stuff any more information in your brain. So take the last day before your EOR to just relax, review lightly, and then take a chill day. You know, watch some TV, take a nap go to bed early, make sure that you have a good breakfast, and you're gonna do fine on your UR. Another method that you guys can try is quizzing yourself. If you and your friend really like to go over topics together, do that. I know it's hard because each student is on their own rotation and at least for my class, we weren't placed in the same rotation at the same time. So if I was in emergency medicine, my friend or my classmate would not be in emergency medicine. They would be an internal or surgery or something different. And so it was hard to kind of coordinate topics and quiz each other that way because our topics weren't lined up. But if you have a friend that's in the same rotation as you, you can definitely try that. It does kind of hold you back sometimes or it might stress you out a little bit more because one person studies faster or someone knows more information about a certain topic. And so really try to hone in on what you need to study and what you need to wrap your brain around before you go in and quiz each other because it's only gonna kind of like throw fire into something that's already really stressful my biggest thing is try to learn as you go don't leave everything for the last minute because it's gonna drive you insane read a little bit every day even I, even if your rotation ends super late i want to say like sometimes i would end surgery at 6 37 I would still go home and kind of read a topic or two just so that I wasn't feeling like I did nothing that day. Or I would do 10 questions, you know, it takes 30 minutes, it's not that long of a time. Try to chip at it a little bit every day at a time because it does build up and you'll notice that at the end of the week, you know, like even though you got home late every single day, doing those 10 questions every day at a time equals 50 done at the end of the week, which is a good amount. And so I would recommend trying to learn things in the hospital, ask questions to the PAs and the residents and the doctors that you're working with, um, take notes, go home, look them up if you don't understand, and try to relate them to what you've learned in the classroom and what you've seen in the hospital. Because a lot of the times making that connection is what makes it stick in your head. And really writing your notes and making sure that you're understanding what's going into those notes will also help you understand the topics even more and really solidify them in your brain. Another big thing to remember is that when you're doing these questions, reread the explanations because they will truly, truly give you a lot of hints on why you got the question wrong. And that's the most important part of doing questions. It's to expose yourself to that one on the computer because that's how you're going to be taking your pants and your EOR. But also test taking is understanding why something was right and why something was wrong. A lot of the times in clinical practice, they don't follow what is really like explained in answer question form on exams and so you shouldn't always think like oh i did that clinically in the hospital and so that should be the right answer in the test question the test question sometimes will be very picky on what it wants you to answer meaning sometimes they'll ask you for an initial drug or an initial test of choice but that's different from gold standard or what you would do if there was an emergency right that's essentially how i study for the exam and i want to say that you do have a lot more time when you're on your clinicals and you're not in the classroom 24 7 but a lot of it is kind of figuring out your studying structure and what works for you and what doesn't and in the beginning you'll struggle a little bit and you'll kind of stumble along the way while you're finding your method to the madness 
but you will eventually find it and you will pass all of your EORs because your goal in this year as a clinical student is to not get a hundred on your EOR. That's not the goal. Your goal is to be in the hospital, learn what you can through experience. And you know, the EOR is to know that you've learned the biggest topics as you've gone through those four to six weeks in the hospital. I've heard from faculty that, you know, if you score on a hundred on your rotation, that means that you slacked in the hospital and you didn't do as much as you should have in the hospital. Now, if you're at below a 65 on your EOR, maybe you didn't study enough at home and you didn't really go through all the topics that needed to be known. But if you're right in that middle, it means that you did well enough in the hospital and you did well enough studying that you're in the center, you're in the 80s and you're fine. You've passed your exam, you're good. So what I can tell you is that it's going to be a shock when you first see your EOR grade because it's not going to be the same as didactic year. But as long as you're in the 80s range and you're passing, you're good to go and you're going to pass all your other EORs as well. I wouldn't worry too much about not getting 100 or even in the 90s for that because your goal as a student in clinical year is to gain as much knowledge as you can in the hospital from firsthand experience, doing procedures, things like that. Not just, you know, sitting behind a computer answering questions. And I know it can sound very daunting, but trust me, that's that's your goal as a student in the clinical year. Also, I would say because you have the two hour time mark, when you're taking these mock exams at home or even the questions, it might be a good idea to time yourself because sometimes you can run out of time for these questions. It's about a minute per question. And so it seems like a lot, but when these paragraphs that are that they're giving you are so dense packed with information, they're giving you vitals, they're trying to paint a clinical picture for you, a minute can seem very short and will fly by very fast when you're doing this exam. So make sure that you're timing yourself and that you're making sure you're um, giving yourself enough time to answer these questions. All right, that is essentially how I studied for my EORs this year. If you have any other questions on how to pass your EORs or how to go about just studying for them, leave a question down below. I will try to answer it to the best of my ability. And um, yeah, that's it for this video. So I hope you guys found this insightful. If you have any requests for any other types of videos, leave them in the comments and I'll try to film those for you as well. That's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.